In this video, we will be finding limits graphically. So for problem A, we need to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. So here is the x value of 2. As we approach 2 from the left, we are getting closer and closer to a y value of 3. So that's the limit from the left. How about the limit as x approaches 2 from the right? As we approach an x value of 2 from the right, we get closer and closer to this y value, which is 1. Now, how about the overall limit as x approaches 2? For this limit to exist, the limit from the left must equal the limit from the right. Because the limit from the left is different from the limit from the right, then uh, the overall limit does not exist. Problem D. Let's find the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. So we're focusing on the x value of 0. As we approach 0 from the left, we are approaching this y value, which is 2. How about the limit as x approaches 0 from the right? Well, as we approach 0 from the right, we are approaching that same y value of 2. Because the limit from the left equals the limit from the right, that tells us that the overall limit as x approaches 0 is also 2. Let's find all of those same limits again for problem number 2. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left. So, uh, okay, 2 is right here. So as we approach 2 from the left, we are approaching a y value of 4. How about from the right? As we approach 2 from the right, it looks like we are approaching that same y value of 4. And again, because the limit from the left and the limit from the right are the same, then the overall limit as x approaches 2 is also 4. Now let's turn our attention to the x value of 0. The limit as x approaches 0 from the left, well, as we approach 0 from the left, we are approaching a y value of 1. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right, as we approach 0 from the right, again, we are approaching a y value of 1. And because the limit from the left and the limit from the right are the same, then the overall limit as x approaches 0 is also 1. Let's do problem number 3, starting with the x value of 2. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left, well, as we approach 2 from the left, we are approaching a y value of 1. As we approach 2 from the right, we are again approaching a y value of 1. Because the limit from the left and the limit from the right are the same, then the overall limit as x approaches 2 is also 1. Now let's talk about what happens as we approach 0. As x approaches 0 from the left, we are approaching a y value of 3. As x approaches 0 from the right, we are also approaching a y value of 3. Because those limits are the same, the overall limit as x approaches 0 is, whoops, is also 3. Problem number 4. Let's see what happens as x approaches 2. As we approach 2 from the left, we approach a y value of 1. However, as we approach 2 from the right, we approach a y value of 2. Because the limit from the left and the limit from the right are different, the overall limit as x approaches 2 does not exist. Now consider what happens as x approaches 0. 
as we approach zero from the left, we approach a y value of negative one. As we approach zero from the right, we still approach a y value of negative one. Because the limit from the left and the limit from the right are the same, that also tells you that the overall limit as x approaches zero is negative one. Problem number five, let's look at what happens as x approaches two. As we approach two from the left, we're approaching a y value of negative one. As we approach two from the right, we again approach a y value of negative one. Because the limit from the left is negative one and the limit from the right is negative one, the overall limit is also negative one. What happens as x approaches zero? Well, we can't really talk about what happens as x approaches zero from the left because uh, this function is not defined to the left of zero. So the left-sided limit does not exist. Um, how about the limit as x approaches zero from the right? As we approach zero from the right, we are approaching a y value of one. Because the limit from the left did not exist, the overall limit cannot exist either. Problem number six, what happens as x approaches two? Well, as x approaches two from the left, we are approaching a y value of zero. We cannot discuss what happens as x approaches two from the right because the function is not defined to the right of two. So the right-sided limit does not exist. Therefore, the overall limit cannot exist. What happens as x approaches zero? As x approaches zero from the left, the y values get closer and closer to one. As x approaches zero from the right, the y value gets closer and closer to one. Because the limit from the left is one and the limit from the right is one, the overall limit as x approaches zero is also one. Problem number seven, for part A, we need to find the limit as x approaches two. So here is the x value of two right here. The limit as x approaches two from the left is zero. The limit as x approaches two from the right is also zero. Therefore, the overall limit will be zero. For part B, how about the limit as x approaches zero? Well, as we approach zero from the left, we are approaching a y value of negative two. As we approach zero from the right, we also approach a y value of negative two. Therefore, the overall limit as x approaches zero is negative two. Part C is asking for the value of the function at two. Well, at two, we have this open circle. So the value of the function is undefined. It does not exist. If there had been an extra dot floating around somewhere, like say if there had been a dot here, then I could say the value of the function is two. But there's just an open circle and nothing else, so it does not exist. Number eight, part A, the limit as x approaches one. So here is an x value of one. As we approach one from the left, we are approaching a y value of one. As we approach one from the right, we approach a y value of one. Therefore, the overall limit as x approaches one is one. For part B, what about the limit as x approaches zero? Well, here is the x value of zero. As we approach zero from the left, we are approaching a y value of two. As we approach zero from the right, we approach a y value of two. 
Therefore, the overall limit as x approaches 0 is 2. Problem number 9. For part A, we want the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. So here is an x value of 1. As we approach 1 from the left, we are approaching a y value of 2. So that is the left-sided limit. How about the limit as x approaches 1 from the right? As we approach 1 from the right, we approach a y value of 1. Because the limit from the left and the limit from the right are two different numbers, the overall limit as x approaches 1 does not exist. And of course, f at 1 means the value of the function at the number 1, which really has nothing to do with these limits we've been talking about. So at the number 1, the value of the function is given by the closed circle here. So um, f at 1 is 1, because uh, we're, at, we're at this y value of 1. For problem number 10, we have some true or false questions here. Uh, part A, the limit as x approaches 2 equals negative 1. So we're talking about an x value of 2, which is right here. As we approach 2 from the left, we are approaching a y value of positive 1. As we approach 2 from the right, we are approaching a y value of positive 1. So the limit does not equal negative 1, it equals positive 1. So that is false. They were trying to trick us by putting this dot down here. If they had asked us um, for the value of f at 2, that would equal negative 1 because of the dot. Part B, the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right. So we're talking about negative 1. So as x approaches negative 1 from the right, we are approaching a y value of 0, we're not 1. So that is false. I think they were trying to trick us with that dot again, but we are not fooled. Part C, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. So here's an x value of 1. As we approach this value from the right, we are approaching a y value of 1. So the limit is 1, and it does indeed say that the limit is 1, so this is true. Part D is asking if the limit as x approaches 2 exists. For the limit to exist, we have to approach the same value from the left and from the right. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left is 1, and the limit as x approaches 2 from the right is also 1. So the limit does exist because it's the same value from the left and the same value from the right. So this is true. Part E, the limit as x approaches 3 is 1. So here's an x value of 3. As we approach 3 from the left, we are approaching a y value of 1. As we approach 3 from the right, we are approaching a y value of 2. These are different, so the limit overall does not exist, and it definitely doesn't equal 1. So this is false. Part F says the limit as x approaches 1 does not exist. Well, let's see. Um, here's an x value of 1. As we approach 1 from the left, we are approaching a y value of 2. So that's the left-sided limit. As we approach uh, 1 from the right, we are approaching a y value of 1. These limits are different, therefore the overall limit does not exist. But that is what it says, so this is true. Part G says the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is 1. So here's an x value of 3. As we approach 3 from the left, we are approaching a y value of 1. 
And that's what it says the limit is, so this is true. Part H says the limit as x approaches 0 from the right equals the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. Let's see. So obviously here is 0. Um, here is the limit as uh, x approaches 0 from the right. That's 1. And the limit as x approaches 0 from the left is also 1. So those are indeed equal, so that is true. That automatically implies that part i is true. The limit as x approaches 0 exists. The overall limit exists if the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. So that is automatically true. Part j, the limit as x approaches 2 equals 1. So here's an x value of 2. As we approach 2 from the left, we are approaching a y value of 1. As we approach 2 from the right, we approach a y value of 1. So the limit does in fact equal 1, so that is true. Part K, the limit as x approaches c exists at every c on the open interval from negative 1 to positive 1. Okay, so here is negative 1, and here is positive 1. So we're talking about this part of the function, and uh, so obviously the limit is going to exist at every point uh, along this part of the function because it is continuous. No matter what point you pick, uh, say I'm just going to randomly pick a point right here, the limit from the left and the limit from the right are always going to be the same thing. So these limits will all exist. So this is true. Now, same question, different interval. So this time we're talking about the open interval from 1 to 3. So here is 1, and here is 3. So we're talking about this portion of the function right here. Uh, the function is continuous everywhere except for here. So this one open circle is really the only point that we even have to think about. But even at this point, the limit exists because uh, as we approach this point from the left and as we approach from the right, we are approaching the same y value of 1. So even at the open circle, the limit exists. And certainly for any other point that you wanted to pick, say if I just randomly pick a point here, it's the same story. All right, the y value from the left and the y value from the right, you get the same y value no matter what. So yes, all of these uh, limits exist. 